The Wolves of the Sea by Herbert Bashford. Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. From dusk until dawn they are hurrying on, unfettered and fearless they flee. From morn until eve they plunder and thieve the hungry white wolves of the sea. With never a rest they race to the west, to the Orient's rim do they run. By the berg in the flow of the Northland they go, and away to the isles of the sun. They will wail at the moon from the desolate dune, till the air has grown dank with their breath. They snarl at the stars from the treacherous bars of the coasts that are haunted by death. They grapple and bite in a keen, mad delight, and they feed on the bosom of grief. And one steals away to a cave with his prey, and one to the rocks of the reef. With the froth on their lips they follow the ships, each striving to lead in the chase. Since loosed by the hand of the king of their band, they have known but the rush of the race. They are shaggy and old, yet as mighty and bold as when God's freshest gale set them free. Not a sail is unfurled in a port of the world, but is prey for the wolves of the sea. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Song of the Forest Ranger by Herbert Bashford Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson Oh, to feel the fresh breeze blowing from the lone ridges yet untrod. Oh, to see the far peak growing whiter as it climbs to God. Where the silver streamlet rushes, I would follow, follow on, till I heard the happy thrushes piping lyrics to the dawn. I would hear the wild rejoicing of the wind-born cedar tree, hear the sturdy hemlock voicing ancient epics of the sea. Forest aisles would I be winding out beyond the gates of care, and in dim cathedrals finding silence in the shrine of prayer. When the mystic night comes stealing through my vast green room afar, never king had richer ceiling, bended bough, and yellow star. Ah, to list the sacred preaching of the forest's faithful fir, with his strong arms upward reaching, mighty trustful worshipper. Come and learn the joy of living. Come and you will understand how the sun his gold is giving with a great impartial hand. How the patient pine is climbing year by year to gain the sky. How the rill makes sweetest rhyming where the deepest shallows lie. I am nearer the great giver where his handiwork is crude. Friend am I of peak and river, comrade of old solitude. Not for me the city's riot. Not for me the towers of trade. I would seek the house of quiet that the master workman made. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Voice of Conquest by Herbert Bashford. Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. I hew my pathway with the sword, slay peace and say I throttled crime, ring round with flame the savage horde, weave crimson in the robe of time. With sabre stroke and thrust of lance, I shake the regions of content, and teach the hosts of ignorance the sweetness of enlightenment. I search for gold and gleaming gem, Seize fairest islands of the sea, find simple folk and fling to them. From cannon mouth humanity, I seek the realm where dullards dwell. I make each brutish weakling feel the good there is in shriek of shell, the blessings wrought by fire and steel. What matter if death's pride be war, or weakness be the slave of might? Is progress not a conqueror, and power another name for right? What matter if I crush the free, or if ten million men be slain? Am I not lord of destiny, the Anglo-Saxon god of gain? End of poem. 
This recording is in the public domain. The Fisherman's Story by Herbert Bashford Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. I knew he was morose that day, because he did not speak to me, but now I know he was away, upon the hills of Italy. He showed me once, long months before, the picture of a dark-eyed girl, within a locket that he wore, a little keepsake wrought of pearl. His life had known no countergale, he had the aid of wind and tide, and dreamed that soon a snowy sail should bear him to his future bride. Twas but a letter, nothing much, a scrap of paper sent to him, yet something he did clutch and clutch, the while his dusky eyes grew dim. And oh, how eagerly he scanned each syllable that formed her name. He crushed the letter in his hand and fed it to the driftwood flame. As in a dream he sat and stared at night's black pall around us flung. I would have spoken if I dared, but silence had a gentler tongue. He did not curse as men will do. Of grief he gave no outward sign, that bitter draught of mere and rue. He drank as though it had been wine. With joyless heart he crooned a song of love and hope as day by day. We hauled our heavy seine along the pebbled beaches of the bay. At last, a oh Christ, I'll not forget. I never saw the light before. An empty boat, we chilled and wet, and ten leagues from our cabin door. Ten weary leagues, a stormy row, but fishermen know not of fear. Had we ere this not faced the snow, when winter nights were dark and drear? Had we not braved the storm king's glee, when winds were shrill and waves were high, been battered by a raging sea, and swung below a ragged sky? Oh, cheer up, cheer up, I cried, we've dared the seas before, my mate, what matter if ill luck betide, why, we were born to laugh at fate. He grasped his oar with one long sigh, nor spoke he any word to me, and so together he and I put out upon the angry sea, and side by side with steady stroke we fought against the veering flaw. In flakes of froth the billows broke, the wildest wolves I've ever saw. Ah! How the cutting north wind blew, and in our faces dashed the spray. The sullen twilight round us grew, the green shore faded into gray. Cheer up, cheer up, a merry row, we'll have ere dawn of day, laughed I. And what care we how winds may blow, the sea's voice only made reply. A silent man he left the shore, nor yet a single word had said. A silent man he dipped his oar, as though it were a thing of lead. The night came down, and still we toiled. The tumult fiercer grew, and now the swirling tide rip foamed and boiled, and ghostly sea swept o'er the prow. The air was filled with flying spume. Cloud gallons sailed down the sky. Strange forms groped toward us in the gloom. Pale phantoms glided swiftly by. Afar at times a lonely loon sent quavering laughter through the night, while from a filmy sheath the moon drew forth a saber keen and bright. Oh, it was weird, the seabird's screech, 
the distant boy's warning bell the white palms lifting high to reach a loosened star that downward fell within my breast each moment grew a fear of more than wind-blown sea and lo that mute man laughing threw aside his oar and leered at me that moonlit face it haunts me still the eyes that spoke the matted brain that moonlit face it sent a thrill of terror through my every vein ah you thought me dead you cur his breath blew hot against my cheek ah you coward you lied to her i felt my limbs go strangely weak lorenzo look the boat the boat but how can madmen understand my god he leaped to clutch my throat a wicked dagger in his hand that lifted knife ah yet i feel a horror of the deadly thing the long keen blade of polished steel against the white stars quivering i upward sprang i grasped somehow the hand that held the hilt of bone with panther strength he struggled now a demon i must fight alone he strove to slay and i to save his life and mine if such might be and in the trough and on the wave like beasts we grappled savagely to plead were vain i could not hear my voice above the tempest's breath i only knew my feet were near the awful icy edge of death we fought until the dark became a glare of crimson to my eyes until the stars were snakes of flame that wreathed along the lurid skies we fought i know not how to me all things of that mad night appear as vague as when in dreams you see the ghouls that haunt the coast of fear we fought we fought and then and then a leap a cry and he was gone and i alone pulled shoreward when the east had grown the flower of dawn i knew he was morose that day because he did not speak to me but now i know he was away upon the hills of italy end of poem this recording is in the public domain why santa claus forgot by herbert bashford read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c a wind from the south swept down the bay and pale with anger the waters turned as the ranchman's wife looked far away to where the lights of the city burned like feeble stars in that christmas eve were the pulsing lights beyond the tide now play with your dolly and do not grieve said she to the wee one at her side good santa claus will come to you this very night if you do not cry and she wiped a tear like a drop of dew from the rosy cheek and the anxious eye no sail no sail and the sad wife pressed a wan face close to the window pane but naught she saw save the sea's white breast and the long gray lash of the hissing rain the night fell black and the wild gale played in the chimney's throat a shill weird tune while into a cloud as if afraid stole the ghostly form of the groping moon then the steels of the sea all landward came each panting courser thundered o'er the rocks of the reef and died in flame along the utmost reach of shore ah heavy the heart of the ranchman's wife and long she listened yet only heard the voice of the breakers in awful strife 
and the plaintive cry of a frightened bird so long she waited and prayed for day as the firelight flickered upon the floor while the prowling wind like a beast of prey did growl and growl at the cabin door the gray dawn crept through the weeping wood the clouds set sail and all was still with a breast of gold the fair morn stood above the firs of the eastern hill the waters slept and the raindrops clung like shimmering pearls to the maple tree the sky was clear and the brown birds flung sweet showers of crystal melody a splintered mast and a tattered sail lay out in the sun on the hard brown sands and plainer than words they told a tale to the woman who wept and wrung her hands and the little girl with the gold-crowned head looked up with her tear-wet eyes of blue oh please don't cry mamma she said old santa claus forgot me too end of poem this recording is in the public domain the russet back thrush by herbert bashford read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c he dwells where pine and hemlock grow a merry minstrel seldom seen the voice of joy is his i know shy poet of the evergreen in dawn's first holy hush i hear his one ecstatic thrilling strain so sweet and strong so crystal clear twould twinkle and the soul of pain at close of day when twilight dreams he shakes the air beneath his tree with such exquisite song it seems that passion breathes through melody within his shadow world he sings away from sun and light and bloom for he alone it is that brings keen rapture to the heart of gloom end of poem this recording is in the public domain children by herbert bashford read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c sweet flowers along life's rugged slope all little children are to me white blooms upon the hills of hope that drink the dews of purity end of poem this recording is in the public domain the suicide by herbert bashford read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c a wild weird night it was the sharp curved moon a shining sabre hurled across the sky cut through a beggared cloud beneath each tree were shadows madly dancing to the high shrill piping of the wind and to the beat of barren limbs that ever writhed and swayed above the frosty earth above the form of her who hastened onward undismayed who stood upon the cliff's huge brow of stone with floating hair a raven banner blown loud roared the sea below and fierce he strove to scale that crag and climbed and surged and blew from hoarsely laughing lips great flakes of foam then in his awful strength reached up and drew her close against his breast the deep caves rang the billows rose like mighty wings and seemed to fan the very stars so brightly did they burn the whole vast ocean shone and gleamed with phosphorescent light 
the pines upon the hill raised rugged arms and prayed for dawn end of poem this recording is in the public domain the derelict by herbert bashford read for LibriVox.org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c i am rolled and swung i am rocked and flung i am hammered and heaved and hurled i am tossed and wheeled i am blown and reeled and battered about the world on the pushing tide i ride and ride or loiter and loaf at ease with never a care though foul or fair i follow the foaming seas men came not nigh when they pass me by for they fear me every one as i cleave the gray of the dawning day or drowse in the summer sun past unknown isles for miles and miles i wander away to where the iceberg lifts and the salt spray drifts in the freezing arctic air i steal by the bars where the flame-winged stars have swarmed in the upper blue and the glow and shine of the drenching brine like white fire burns me through i haunt as a ghost the rock-girt coast where the bell-boy loudly rings and the breakers leap to the mighty sweep of the night wind's sable wings i shake and moan i creak and groan in the wrathful tempest when the old sea raves and digs deep graves for the jolly sailor men what matters time or what the clime to a vagrant of the sea to live or die or not care i there is no port for me end of poem this recording is in the public domain copalis by herbert bashford read for LibriVox.org by nemo copalis high above the strong pacific rising solemnly and lone looms the rugged rock copalis like a mountain built of stone break the heavy waves against it roaring through its caverns wide caverns worn by maddened waters and the moon enchanted tide all around are curling breakers sifting spray and flying foam where the slim sea otter gambles and the gray gull has a home all around is fierce commotion pale forms reaching to the skies sounds of awful cannonading haunting moans and battle cries clinging to its craggy summit fastened down with massive chains bathed in summer's yellow sunshine drenched in winter's driving rains rests a low quaint hut the dwelling of the brave copalis jim rests the hut whose door is opened opened never save by him from this airy habitation keen black eyes peer on the seas raven locks are tossed and tangled in the sighing ocean breeze night and morn he scans the billows marching grandly far below night and morn he sees the warriors with their helmets wrought of snow day by day he keeps his vigil caring naught for any man watching ever with the patience that the otter hunter can oft his swarthy face grows eager oft his rifle darts its flame and a dying creature struggles from that quick unerring aim oft when midnight winds are calling in his mind sad thoughts arise thoughts of her who held him captive by the magic of her eyes in his dreams she stands before him 
as she stood in days agone ere his heart had grown more hardened than the rock he dwells upon and he hears her laughter ringing like the echoes of a lute through the forest still and sombre down the vales of quillayut and again he sits beside her speaking tender words of love with the fragrant flowers surrounding and the waving green above but the thunder of the breakers and the sea birds piercing scream from the ledges brown and jagged break the vision of his dream ah no wonder false no wonder with your artless maiden grace think you never of your lover living in this lonely place he whose fondest hopes you shattered now a hermit mute alone far away on bleak copalis on a mountain built of stone end a poem this recording is in the public domain The Wreck of the Ferndale by Herbert Bashford Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Horse with calling, pale and anger, From dim dawn till set of sun, Wind-blown billows, crowding landward, Shook the shores of Washington, Stalwart seas tramped down the beaches, Giant seas, each thundered tone, lunged against the rugged headlands, while the mighty caverns groaned, roared along the sandy beaches, foaming, panting in the race, struck the cliff's opposing ledges, leaped to smite its massive face, leaped and flung their white arms wildly, then, all baffled, backward fled moaning sobbing on the shingle like a mother o'er her dead night fell black upon the waters night with no star throbbing through fiercer yet the waters battled stronger still the cold wind blew every pine upon the hilltop cried in anguish cried in vain and the ranchman's wife peered seaward with her face against the pain heard the waves loud cannonading saw at times a lifting light fiery soul of sky-tossed breaker burning through the raven night listened sadly at the window thinking of the ships at sea of wrecked sailors drifting helpless and the storm king's fiendish glee hark what sound above the breakers was it but the sudden shock of a seeing sea bombarding towering battlements of rock was it but the crashing thunder of a fir tree's rugged form of a fir tree that had fallen as it wrestled with the storm no ah no again the gun spoke and the ranchman's wife grew pale god have mercy on a vessel driven shoreward by the gale god above have mercy on them he alone can still the waves hear them calling they will perish how the ocean roars and raves thus spake trembling careworn women sturdy ranchmen young and old as they gathered on the north beach in the darkness and the cold all the night their lanterns glimmered in the wild wind's icy breath while the surf grew thick with cordage and the breakers talked of death all the night they watched and waited where the hoary foam flakes flew one by one along the north beach drifted in the ferndale's crew one by one they drifted lifeless to the bleak pacific sands 
salt tears on their pallid faces seaweeds in their hardened hands eyes of pity looked upon them looked upon them where they lay as the morn came softly stealing saddened morn in robe of gray and above the heaving waters in the daybreak chill and grim one lone mass yet pointed upward pointed upward unto him end of poem this recording is in the public domain mount rainier by herbert bashford read for LibriVox.org by phil Schempf. like autumn leaves the years may fall upon his brow from off the ancient tree of time yet he will tower above the dust and grime of earth the first pink petals of the dawn that bloomed into the flower of day the wan and hesitating moon's first skyward climb he viewed in silent majesty sublime the fir proclaims him king the great seas fawn and weave fair garlands at his feet each stream salutes with flashing sword the wildest storm that beats against his massive breast ne'er mars the deep serenity of his white dream at night how vaguely grim his awful form high looming in god's wilderness of stars end of poem this recording is in the public domain To the Moon by Herbert Bashford. Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. O ever changeful and enchanting moon, what mystical and varied forms are thine! To night a peerless queen I see thee shine in raiment from the loom of dreams. Yet soon, when skies grow gray and chill winds pipe a tune, a ghost thou'lt grope beside the battle line of dark cloud legions or in anguish pine upon the heated highway of red noon or wan or careworn long for quick release from weary journeys through the deeps of night then calm asleep wilt thou appear to me thy glowing bosom soft and white with peace as though to thee had flown on wings of light the myriad souls of each gray century end of poem this recording is in the public domain. Longing by Herbert Bashford Read for LibriVox.org by Phil Schempf In city walls where duty bids me stay, I long for woodland paths, sweet breath of pine, To see again the distant dazzling line Of slender sandy shore, I know to-day how fair must lie the sea far, far away, on whose broad breast the sun-wrought sapphires shine, and sparkle in the wind that breathes of wine, how shafts of gold and shifting shadows play beneath cool groves that sing a slumber song, and clear bird notes are tingling through and through the peaceful heart of silence. Ah! I long for friendly firs that brush against the blue, and each still night to watch the warrior Mars review the vast procession of the stars. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Eventide by Herbert Bashford. Read for LibriVox.org by Phil Schempf. The garish day is done, and faint and far, like jagged shadows, all the mountains lie. White priests that saw the red sun sink and die. Leaf-hidden birds, where willow clusters are, fling down sweet showers of melody. A bar of burnished gold from sunset's forge hangs high above the hills, and in the purple sky beyond the twilight grows one yellow star along some distant lane the cattle go with bells that sound like music heard in dreams of years agone the moon with soul of light now crowns god's highest pyramid of snow while from dim ponds and softly flowing streams ring out the rhyming minstrels of the night 
End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Oregon Ruffed Grouse by Herbert Bashford Read for LibriVox.org by Scott Kelly A lover of dim ways in woodland shade, And he whose martial music shakes the still cool air Where lilies drowse and silver rill alone draws light Adorn the gloomy glade, Where, deep within the hush, dank moss is laid, that solitude may rove from hill to hill with soundless tread and where no birds glad trill. Air breaks the iron silence God has made to haunt sequestered dells in his delight beneath low dropping boughs that shadow all the dreamy pools. And when careworn we come to where the wilderness makes of the night a dusky slave forever held in thrall how sweet to hear the throbbing of his drum end of poem this recording is in the public domain night by herbert bashford read for LibriVox.org by larry wilson beloved night calm soothing summer night your presence breathless of peace your raven hair falls over me and tender as the prayer of kneeling virgin in dawn's holy light is your caressing hand on sorrow's white and trembling lips or furrowed face of care sweet slumber nestles on your breast and where your dark robe trails in valley or on height the petals of your dream flowers flutter down to sleeping eyes i love you I love you so, mother of mine, and when the day is done I watch to see the first gleam in your gown of lambent jewels that thrill and throb as though the pulse of God beat through them every one. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Passing of Autumn by Herbert Bashford Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo The Passing of Autumn The glory of her reign is o'er an old, forlorn, A faded, tattered gown around her drawn, She sits with drooping head and broods upon The time ere her rich robes were rudely torn and cast aside, A beggar, weary, worn is she, whose garments like a gorgeous dawn once lay along the hills her pride is gone a knot is left her but to mourn and mourn amid her ruins off there comes to me from out the wood her low despairing wail when thoughts of that imperial attire of other days brings keener agony when all exultant she heard nations hail the queen of color with her soul of fire. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. On Nebraska's Fertile Shore by Robert Bashford. Read for LibriVox.org by Scott Kelly. Oh, I am so awful homesick, and I feel so wretch queer. Orphram, he is gone a riding on a wild electric here. Rhody, that's my only daughter. She is gone and left me tear. Both a trespassing, round like idiots. Wonder what the next they'll do. They don't seem to think. They daring providence right in the face. Riding without a horse or engine, going at a breakneck pace. Of course I needn't stand here waiting. Both insisted I should come. But I vow I'll not be reckless while I'm so far from home. Clear out here by the Pacific, just as far as we can get. 
And if we stay here much longer, I declare I'll have a fit. It's the most deceiving country as ever, one will say. Every drop of water, salty in the hull of Frisco Bay. Oh, I've tramped these pesky sidewalks till my feet is lame and sore. And a yearning every minute for Nebraska's fertile shore. Then they brag about their scenery. California, hump, oh dear. Scenery. Well, just speaking plainly, I don't see no scenery here. Nothing but the mountain ranges rearing up so tunnel high. That butter kit looked nowhere except the middle of the sky. Mountains, everlasting mountains, hills and woods and rocks and snow. Where the scenery is, they're bragging on and I'm the one as wants to know. Let them stand in Lincoln County just back our coward fence. And if they don't say there's scenery, they ain't got a mite of sense. Why, you can... Look for miles round you and see nothing but the flat. Level prairie in the sunshine, kivin' in its grassy mat. That is scenery. Y'all can look and they're just as far as you can see. With no hills, uh, interposing, uh, no rocks, uh, airy tree. Oh, I've told my husband Ephraim that I'd gallivant no more. When aging, I'd sought my foot on old Nebraska's fertile shore. Then I'm worried, so by Rhodey, Furish is missing every day. I'll hear lessons on the mandolin that Pa bought her last May. And she could perform amazing. She could play Old Hundred, nice. And another song begin, Happy Day That Fixed My Chice. Yes, this singing teacher told me, as reported at the Kears, he was sure she'd played an organ in the church for many years. Now her notion's hacker flunting, pine as she wants now, and her pa says we'll get it soon as he can sell a cow. Says he can dispose a muley. I just told him no siree, no fur, no newfangled nonsense. Mule is my cow, and you see, he's just got a spot in aging her, cause she's got a lengthy tail, and in fighting skeeters sometimes whisks in it the milk and pail. Oh, I'll be the gladdest mortal when I reach the kitchen door of that dear old farmhouse standing on Nebraska's fertile shore. No, I don't enjoy the city where the women folk is dressed. Monday and clean through till Saturday all in this Sunday best. I just like to catch my wrapper up and pin to round my waist. Carry not a single copper if my shoestring comes unlaced. Then go out and milk old mule and, and turn out the spotted calf. While the chickens giggle round me and the speckled roosters laugh. Then go out in the summer's kitchen, set me down and Churn a spell till time comes to put the victuals on and ring the dinner bell. Yes, I love the peaceful quiet or the farm where it's so still. Nothing but the ducks a quacking and pigs a squealing fur their swill. Nothing but the geese a clacking and the bawling of the cows. And the nickering of the horses as they're coming to the house. Oh, I want to leave the city with its racket and its roar. And get back there to silence on Nebraska's fertile shore. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Downedest Gale I Ever Knowed by Herbert Bashford Read for LibriVox.org by Scott Kelly Downedest gal I ever knowed Neatest girl I ever seen Lived down in Red Ravine Just below the country road 
guess she was about 16. Sophie was her name, and she was as cute as cute can be. When I'd go to go to town, I'd bring her the biggest lot of stuff. Popcorn, licorice enough. Candy for her to fill a room. Once she hit me with a broom, because I kissed her on the cheek. And the midget wouldn't speak to me for perhaps a week. When I'd raise my eyes to earn, Jiminy, my cheeks would burn and get redder in a beat. Oh, she looked just powerful sweet. When I'd try to call her dear, why well, I'd feel so doggone queer that I'd lean again the fence as if I didn't have no sense. Twist the buttons on my vest. Asked her who she liked the best. Asked her if it wasn't Bill or old Jones that run the hill. Keep a hint round, you see, till she'd up and say twas me. I was jealous of old Tim Pike. Jealous as the very deuce. Though they didn't see much use, for his freckles was so thick and his hair was so like brick. That a feller one day said you could toast a hunk of bread if you'd hold it near his head. It was awkwarder in sin. Never fished along the creek, but he'd have him tumbled in. Sophie peered to pity Jim. Well, I thought if I was him, I'd go off and hide somewhere. Else put plaster in my hair. But this homely lantern jawed, looking cuss stood round and chawed on a plug o' tobacco. Half his time and talked to her of his love till I just told him tis mosey. And he rolled up his sleeves and landed me plump between the eyes. And he went to Sophie and, sir, she married him, the pesky mule. Wasn't she a regular fool? I was just totally blowed. Tidiest girl I ever knowed. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Since My Mary Went Away by Herbert Bashford Read for LibriVox.org by Scott Kelly You should just have seen her Seen her long and silky hair Shining like a shock of sunbeams Waving in the summer air Then her cheeks seemed to blossom roses And her fingers, don't you know They was white as maple branches Wrapped around by winter snow Eyes so big and blue and honest, all is gazing into mine, and a heart that never faltered, whether rain or weather shine. Cheerful words for everybody, smiling all the live long day. Do you wonder that I'm lonely since my Mary went away? I remember how we used to, on them sunny afternoons, stroll together down the woodland, listening to the merry tunes played by little jolly breezes, fooling among the treetops high, and she thought that river yonder was a strip of fallen sky. Of course, it's only my odd fancy. Anyhow, it strikes me so, that things now ain't half so cherry as they was a year ago. The trees air green, it's mighty sartin, but to me, they're last gray, and the birds seem sort of silent since my Mary went away. Why the pathways down the valley, where we wandered hand in hand, is today a sort of gloomy one. I can't quite understand. Then the crick that giggled softly shook itself and run along. Now go slipping past the willows with an awful solemn song. Them old hills, too, are you going? Sorry, they haven't kept you here. Goodbye. Strange, the air looks misty. Maybe, why, twas just a tear. Like as not you think me foolish and don't care for what I say. But I feel, oh God, so lonesome, 
since my Mary went away. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.